Uh, so the way that I, I do this on crest rails is uh, uh, I've got a line just drawn up the middle of my bench, and, and you, you don't have to have the line. It just kind of helps a little bit. And uh, then I can put the uh, the ends up even with the front of the bench. So it's kind of referencing off of the off of the bench here to get to get close. And close is good enough for this chair. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> now we've got 17 and 9 sixteenths to the to the center. Uh, so if I'd have been smart, I would have divided that in half before I got on got on camera. <clears throat> so you know, 17 and 9 sixteenths. So let's just say 17. So we got eight and a half, and then let's call it five eighths, so we can divide it in half. We're not dealing with 30 seconds. Uh, so we got five sixteenths. And eight and a half and uh, five sixteenths, so eight and thirteen sixteenths. So if I take this and put it, doesn't that drive you Australians crazy? So if I just take this and put this on eight and thirteen sixteenths, right there, right on my line, you know, right on that, and then put this point in the center and I pull it out and I put. 17 and 9 sixteenths or 17 and 5 eighths now since we're not dealing in 30 seconds I guess we could deal in thousands if we really wanted to go crazy but that'd really be crazy um, 17 and 5 eighths so okay so I got that measurement right now if you want to check it see if you're in the center then I got nine and an eight there, and I got nine and an eight there. So you know, if you didn't have it, then you'd shift them a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So that's the post right there. But I can't start shaping my tenon. So I got to shape three eighths tenon here. I can't start shaping that tenon with the draw knife right where the post is. Uh, ain't gonna work. So the crest drill gets tapered slightly right through here. So I can back up a bit and give me some room to work. Now if I do it at a known point, so let's just say two inches, that probably work. Now I can just take the two all the way around. Right like that. Let's see, right here. Make sure you get the right one first. <clears throat> now as I'm fitting the post to it, I can measure, I have a measurement, I can, I can just measure two inches. So when the post gets that, the two inch point from that pencil line, then I'm there. Okay, so how do you, come down to, man, we're going to be cutting that off. That's too much. Too much right there. We don't need all that. That was pretty good for siding, but I don't need all that now. And it was real good for bending. I remember that's why we had it that long, was for bending. So if that's the edge of the post, and that's the other side of the post, and uh, let's just give ourselves, a, oh, let's give ourselves a, a, an inch and a half. Okay, so it's going to stick out from the post an inch and a half, so I'm going to cut right there. I, want, I better right cut. I got too many pencil marks on this thing. What did I do? Two and a half from there. Okay, so if you excuse me a minute while I just cut this off because that's not a big deal. Okay, okay so that's a lot better. Uh, just be taken down from there to. Uh, you know, hitting three eighths right here. So, just be a slight slope down, hitting three eighths and coming, coming out. Now, uh, that looks like the center right there. Let me mark it on this side too. Got some big fat pencil lines there. Um,
Okay, now, let me walk over here. So you could draw a little 3 8 circle here or do whatever. The, the way that I typically do it, the way I typically do it, I'm not going to do it here, uh, but you can do it. It involves a cordless drill, and of course I got a cordless drill, and I just put a 3 8 brad point bit in there, and you just barely touch it right there, and it creates this 3 8 indention, and you can nail it with the draw knife. You can come down, and you just got little feather edges around it. It's much easier than fitting it to the opposite, which would be cutting uh, the mail. Uh, it's uh, much easier to fit it to the, to the, to the hole. But that would involve pulling out my cordless drill, and uh, uh, and now the problem with the uh, <coughs> with doing it with the auger, or auger bit, like I could put it in the bit brace and go down, but the lead screw on an auger bit is not a drill, so the lead on a brad point is like a crude drill bit, so it actually removes some material, so it's not a wedge. <coughs> but the uh, the lead screw on the auger bit is a wedge, it's not removing any material, and so it's going to split, and on this end grain, so you get by with it on face grain, but on end grain you won't get by with it, even a lead screw this small will split this end, and uh, so I was just going to try to see if I could kind of go down just by hand, this might be a crazy thing to try to do, and probably is, it's probably like ridiculous uh, to try to do this, especially right here on camera showing that I've never even done this before. Incompetence <coughs> with this. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it. Now, okay, I barely scored it. It barely works. Huh. Hold on a second. I got another idea. <coughs> Let's see if I can do this. I ain't gonna give up yet. If I could strip, if I could strip those uh, those lead screws uh, by uh, those threads by going backwards, see, and pushing down on it. There we go. Yeah, that did it. I could have worked that out before, <coughs> but then you wouldn't have seen all that. <coughs> okay. So I'll do it to the other side, and then I'll bring the shaving horse in, and I'll see you in the shaving horse. Uh, so, now, there's a lot of ways to gauge this, just by eye, you just do it by eye. But um, another way that's cheap and expensive is just a wrench. So I'm wanting 3 eighths here, so I'm going to go for a 7 sixteenths uh, wrench. Give me a little bit of leeway. Um, so, yeah, once again, and this is my theme through all my chairs, is split straight grain stock. It enables you to do this. Otherwise, you're going to be splitting out below your tenon here. You're going to have to be going back that way with some other tool. But, uh, you know, split straight grain stock. Allows you to do a lot. Ah. Hear that ray flake? <laughs> Those ray flakes are hard. It's in the radial plane right here and it's hitting that major Leary ray. That draw knife just skated. Just skated right across it. And you can turn it over and take a look and see that you're not dipping in too much right here. Uh, make sure you're all even coming across. <clears throat> much easier to get two two planes. You know, establishing reference points. That's that's so important, and it's uh, it's what the draw knife is so good at. It's been able to do that. Uh, it's kind of get under these these ray flips here. So you see, 7 sixteenths is uh, easily fitting on there. Uh, 
little zip left there. And now you can match it up over here. And it's a little hard to hold it in the shaving horse. This is a good time to put it in a vise if you have one. Uh, and it's what I usually do at this point, but I don't want to get up off the shaving horse. So. Seven sixteenths is fitting a little tight right there, and so let's see what we got. Yeah, looking good. Keeping those reference points, you come in with octagonal. see just those little feather edges where I drilled that hole and uh, just take off small amounts so I'm there there on the top So I've already started to round it a little bit. Now, this is where you know you need to make the decision uh, if uh, if you want to go to a spoke shave here. So I've eliminated the spoke shave from being necessary on 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 the chair. For one, if you don't own a spoke shave, but the other is just to increase those draw knife skills, and uh, so. You know, obviously, this is the point of diminishing returns with the with the draw knife. You'd go to the spoke shave to just knock those corners off. But if you take the draw knife all the way, you're going to increase those draw knife skills, and you're going to see exactly where and why that uh, point of diminishing returns is where where it is, and probably move it a little bit um, forward uh, to where you would use the draw knife more. So let me grab the post. <clears throat> so here I have the, the right post. I've been working on the right side and I always forget which one's the inside so just put a little, a little mark for, for inside. Um, and now you can just start to just start fitting it so you can see I'll need my, my rule eventually here um, I'm still quite a ways away from it but by trying to push it in right like that you can get you some nice references there of where you need to where you need to cut and uh, It's, you know, one thing also that this would do is not only increase your draw knife skills trying to do it all with a draw knife, but also force you to get your draw knife sharper because it's hard to take off small amounts unless your draw knife's really sharp. And uh, this one could have used a little bit of honing before I started this. It's, it's doing an okay job, but it would do a better job. If I would follow my own advice. Now 
and stop and take the time to sharpen tools. I think we all do too much of that. I know I do. You know they need sharpening and I am, maybe I just do this. Whenever if you stop to sharpen it, it's gonna be a lot more fun and do a lot better work. Okay, which side over? There we go. Okay, I'm within probably an inch or less. So I might be able to get it with this with this next one. Ridge right there. <clears throat> Town's been quite quiet today. Now, watch as soon as I say that, some weed eater or mower start up right next door. But, uh, been pretty pretty quiet this morning. Okay, see so what we got. Two and an eight. So no reason in sitting here watching me do the the last eighth there. I'll finish up this one and then do that one. And uh, the next time I see you. We're going to be uh, boring some more holes.